Hello and welcome to the 10th lesson in the U.S. Citizenship Preparation class. As always, thank you for staying with us. Classes are brought to you through the Gilchrist Immigrant Resource Center with special thanks to teacher Daniel McCall. First, let's have a civics review test. See if you remember some of those questions from last week. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. The War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War. Any one of those. What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? What group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Africans or people from Africa? Either way. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. That is the Civil War or the War Between the States. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Slavery, economic reasons, states' rights. Okay. Any of those. Slavery, economic reasons, or states' rights. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? He freed the slaves, as known as the Emancipation Proclamation. He saved or preserved the Union. He led the U.S. during the Civil War. Just one of those. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? It freed the slaves. It freed the slaves in the Confederate States. You can just say freed the slaves. That's fine. And let's try a reading and writing sentence. Go ahead and read this question if you are sitting down looking. And then together, who was Abraham Lincoln? Who was Abraham Lincoln? And if you're sitting down with a pencil and pad, you can write this. Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Okay, and I'm going to put it here. Lincoln was president during the Civil War. You can check your answer. Be careful of that little extra L in, the, um, in his name in Lincoln. So we are going to continue now with another civics lesson. And last week we did the wars of the U.S. wars of the 1800s. So this week we will do the wars, the U.S. wars of the 1900s, plus a little few other tidbits that we're going to throw in there, okay? So the wars of the 1900s, this is a big one. There were five major wars, excuse me once again for going quickly through all wars. <laughs> um, the five major wars in the 1900s are World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and the Gulf War also be known as the Persian War, the Persian Gulf War. Um, so we'll start here with World War I, 1914 to 1918. Many people in the United States did not want to enter World War I. They thought the U.S. should not try to solve or get involved in international problems, right? But after Germany attacked U.S. and British ships and killed American citizens, the U.S. did enter World War I in 1917. 
Now, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was president during World War I. He was the 28th president of the United States. And during his first term, he was able to keep the U.S. out of World War I, but by 1917, he knew that it was no longer possible, and he asked Congress to declare war on Germany. Two million American soldiers went to France to help end the war. And the war ended in 1918, and Woodrow Wilson traveled to Paris to work out the details of the surrender by Germany. So we have Woodrow Wilson, World War I. That's a lot of W's. All right. Let's move on to World War II. World War II is 1939 to 1945. After World War I, there were still many problems in Europe. Specifically in Nazi Germany, the government persecuted people because of their religion or ethnic origins. And the Holocaust was the systematic state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jewish people by the Nazi regime and its allies. Germany was allied with Japan and Italy. Okay. The U.S. entered World War II after Japan bombed the U.S. naval bases in a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Hawaii in 1941. Now, in World War II, the United States fought Japan, Germany, and Italy, and specifically Japan's military empire, the German Nazis, and the Italian fascists. This was truly a world war, with battles fought in Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Pacific Coast. Now, the Great Depression. The Great Depression was a time of severe worldwide economic depression that took place during the 1930s. It was a time period right before the United States became involved in World War II, and it was a period of very high unemployment. Many banks and businesses closed. Here we have Franklin Roosevelt, and Franklin Roosevelt was the president during the Great Depression and World War II, Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt was the longest serving president over 12 years. This was before we had those term limits. Remember now a president can only serve eight years max, two terms of four years each, right? So he was actually going into his fourth term, but he died three months into his fourth term. So here is Franklin Roosevelt on the penny. You will see him around as you are buying things. He will show up on the penny. Another name associated with World War II is Dwight D. Eisenhower. And before he was president, Eisenhower was an army general in World War II. He was commander of U.S. forces and a supreme commander of the Allies over in Europe. And he is Dwight D. Eisenhower, and he was a general in World War II. Now let's look at the Korean War. The Korean War took place from 1950 to 1953. The Korean War began when North Korea which was under communist influence, it invaded South Korea, which was allied with the United States and establishing a democratic government at the time. The United Nations with the United States as the principal force came to the aid of South Korea. So China and the Soviet Union aided North Korea. Now here we see the United States provided military support to stop the advance of the North Korean army. In the Korean conflict, the democratic governments directly confronted communist governments. The fighting ended in 1953 with the establishment of the countries of North Korea and South Korea. Moving into the Vietnam War, from 1959 to 1975, U.S. armed forces 
and the South Vietnamese Army fought the North Vietnamese. The U.S. supported the democratic government in southern Vietnam to help it resist pressure from the communist North. The war ended in 1975 with the fall of Saigon, which was the capital of South Vietnam. And Saigon is now known as Ho Chi Minh City. You can see here the city's namesake comes from Ho Chi Minh, which was the communist revolutionary leader who is credited with uniting the country. Almost 60,000 American men and women in the military died or were missing as a result of the Vietnam War. Moving on to the Gulf War. The Persian Gulf War began when Iraq invaded Kuwait. That was from 1990 to 1991. This invasion put the Iraqi army closer to Saudi Arabia and its oil reserves, which supplied much of the world with oil. So the U.S. and many other countries wanted to drive the Iraqi army out of Kuwait and prevent it from invading other nearby countries. So here you can see um, where Iraq is and Kuwait, this little country right here, and Saudi Arabia and their big oil reserves along here in Saudi Arabia. And so we were trying to prevent Iraq from continuing to invade and get maybe get control over those oil reserves. The war ended when the Iraqis left Kuwait in February 1991. Okay. And the United States led forces from over 30 countries to battle against the Iraqi army. Now, communism. So we're going to go back a little bit because we talked a little bit about communism during the Korean and Vietnam War. And just to review, because um, we're going to change topics a little bit because we just went through all five of those wars that are listed under the 1900s. And we have one more thing to talk about. It is called a war, but it's... Um, it's not a war where you where you think of um, battles, okay? So this is so it has to do with communism, and communism is an economic system in which the government controls companies, production, employment, wages, and prices. So we touched on that a little bit, and we want to talk here about what's called the Cold War. And now the Cold War was a period of tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. And the Cold War began shortly after World War II and lasted for more than 40 years. During the Cold War, the main concern of the United States was the spread of communism. In a communist system, the government controls companies, products, prices, and wages. And the economic system of the United States is a capitalist economy, right, or a market economy. So the United States believed that a democratic government and a capitalist economy were the best ways to preserve individual rights and freedoms. The Soviet Union was a communist country that controlled many other countries. So the U.S. fought the war, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War, hoping to stop communist control of these countries and then the spread of communism and the spread of communist governments. The Cold War ended with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the reunification of East and West Germany in 1990 and the breakup of the USSR, the Soviet Union, in 1991. One more thing before we go, we need to talk about September 11th, 2001. On September 11, 2001, four planes flying out of U.S. airports were taken over by terrorists. 
The terrorists chose four flights, all going to California. These flights were selected because the planes were loaded with fuel for the long flights. Four passenger planes were hijacked. About 3,000 people from 90 countries died. Two planes flew into the World Trade Center and caused the buildings to collapse. One plane flew into the Pentagon. The Pentagon is the U.S. military headquarters. And another plane crashed in Pennsylvania. It is believed that the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania was intended to fly into either the White House or the Capitol building. So terrorism remains a serious problem in the United States. Okay. So now we will move on to the actual civics questions and see how well you were listening, right? Let's give it a try. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. We have five choices here, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, or the Persian War, or the Gulf War. Okay, so any one of those wars fought in the 1900s. Who was president during World War I? Who was president during World War I? That was Woodrow Wilson. You can also just say Wilson. Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? That was Franklin Roosevelt or just Roosevelt. Who did the United States fight in World War II? Who did the United States fight in World War II? That is Japan, Germany, and Italy. Japan, Germany, and Italy. And you'll need to say all three countries, please. Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? And that was World War II, World War II. During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? That is communism, communism. What major event happened on September 11th, 2001 in the United States? What major event happened on September 11th, 2001 in the United States? Terrorists attacked the United States. Terrorists attacked the United States. Let's do a couple of reading and writing sentences before we go. Take a look here if you can. Let's read. What state has the most people? What state has the most people? And try writing, California has the most people. California has the most people. And check here. California has the most people. And let's read this one. What was the first state? What was the first state? And please write, Delaware was the first state. Delaware was the first state. And here you go. Delaware was the first state. Check it and write it on your cards. I hope you have a big stack right now. And we will continue lessons next week and finish up the civics. You will have all of a uh, whole pack, all 100 civics questions 
by the end of the next lesson. Okay, so stay with us and oh, thank you for watching. That's it for number 10, class number 10. Please join us for class number 11 uh, to continue your lessons. We are almost done. Um, we have two more and if you click on click on that subscribe button above thank you very much that would be great and you will get the next lesson delivered right to your inbox let us know if you have any questions below and we will try to point you in the right direction please remember that we are not a law firm and so that we always provide links to um, lawyers that you can get information from and always want to check your application before sending anything to USCIS. Thank you all once again for watching. Keep studying and stay well.